Today we're going to make a shed to storage some tools and expand the working space a bit. Before starting the actual project, I wanted to clean and paint the walls to get a refreshed space around me. I bought three big beams and asked my lumber store to slice them in smaller parts. We don't have 2x4s in Europe, so the best way to save some money is to buy large beams and cut them. Here I was using the miter saw to square and cut the pieces to length, so I can start assembling the structure for the floor, walls and ceiling. This project is pretty much all about cutting and screwing pieces together, so be prepared to drive about 500 stainless steel screws. I like to pre-drill whenever possible, so it becomes easier to hold the tip of the screw and get it started right away. Also sometimes the wood splits towards the end, so this is the only way to avoid that. I use stainless steel screws for everything here because this is an outdoor project and humidity can corrode iron galvanized screws pretty easily. It's just a safer option. This is becoming the floor skeleton and I want it to be super strong because there is going to be some dead weight of the bigger power tools on top of it. Having a driller and driver makes all the process super quick and I'm impressed how this little driver can have that much torque force and still doesn't harm the wrist. I kept working on the walls and the floor tiles are not leveled so I had to use some shims occasionally to make the wood pieces flush with each other. I decided to apply some plastic sheet to the side that is going to face down to prevent water from coming into the skeleton. I just used some random plastic I had, nothing fancy, and there are probably more appropriate options out there. The boards I'm using to cover the skeleton are made out of recycled materials from automobile industry. So it's fairly cheap, has insulating properties, and it's dimensionally stable, so it's perfect for outdoor use, plus it's ecological, which is pretty cool. Although I felt like using a mask and long sleeves most of the time, since it causes some itchiness due to the fiberglass on its composition. I started to put the frame together and realized I forgot about the slope for the roof, so I cut some diagonals out of some stretchers using the plunge saw since it's just a matter of placing the rail where I want the cut and plug the saw. It was hard for me to work it out from a stool, so I decided to bring the walls down again to attach the triangles. Although I had a visual idea of what I wanted and the overall measurements to be around 1 meter by 2 by 2, a lot of steps were being thought on the way. So you'll see me going back here and there and remaking a few steps due to mistakes, as I never built anything like this. It was time to secure the frame to the concrete wall, so I used some drill bits that are meant for several materials, so you can drill everything in a single shot. Then I wanted to screw the ceiling in place, but it was kind of hard for my tiny size and not much arm strength, but eventually I got there. I called for help to place the top board in place and had to patch another vertical piece because the sideboards were previously cut too shallow so I could fit them inside the building elevator to bring them up in the studio. So this means I will have to screw a thin slice of board later on. Before applying the sideboards I thought it was a good idea to create sort of a footer and for that I used some scraps of cement and wood fiber board I had. So I drilled some holes for screws and attached them leveled. Now I can rest the board on the footer and simply screw it to the frame. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with the roof, but I wanted it to be a creative point of the build. And on my trip to the home center to buy a leather, I decided to carpet it out with real grass. As the grass and land weighs up quite a lot, I decided to reinforce the ceiling skeleton. Now I need to patch the top missing triangle shape on each side. It was pretty easy using the plunge saw with the rail. I 
I fill the screw holes with some putty and trim off the excess material from the front face using a flush trim router bit. I needed to create some walls for the grass and the simplest way seemed to be with pocket holes. Then I made some holes for the water to escape and sealed the whole top with two coats of liquid rubber and let it dry for 24 hours each layer. Cut some more footer material for the front and use the extension of the miter saw to place the flooring wood and cut it to length. Nail the flooring and attach the front footer before screwing the final flooring piece. I applied three coats of flooring varnish right away before leaving footprints all over the place. It's time to work on the front door. I divide it in two so the bottom part is shallower and will work as a ramp to roll the power tools in and out. For that bottom part, I made half laps to join the frame at the miter saw. I pulled that black piece to the side so that the bolt will hit the piece, preventing the saw blade from going all the way down. Then I adjusted the bolt until the teeth of the blade were aligning with the pencil line on the wood. After making a bunch of passes, I could hammer the remaining material, but you can also do even more passes and remove pretty much all the material like so. Then it's a matter of cleaning the surface with a chisel or small hand plane. At this time I haven't realized yet I was going to replace these boards by some sheets of metal, so yeah, the big door ended up super heavy. Before going ahead and placing the grass on top, I drove a couple more screws to the concrete wall. I painted everything but the doors with some titanium white and happy little clouds filled up the sky. The day I chose to make the grass roof had a lot of wind, so it wasn't very easy to lay things down. I placed a sheet of geotextile and some lightweight expanded clay aggregate on top to provide a good drainage. Then another layer of geotextile, followed by land and finally the grass and rolls. Here I was removing the board material to swap for metal sheet. I also removed the screws that were near the edge that I beveled with a plant saw set to 45 degrees. This was made to remove the bump for when the bottom piece is opened and sent to ramp mode. The blade couldn't go all the way through so I tore apart the rest of the material. I ran to the hardware store to get some aluminum sheets as the sun was starting to set. 
I wanted to bring the sheets cut to size, but their guillotine wasn't big enough, so I had to cut them myself. The plant saw has a variable speed, which is so awesome, and I could bring the speed down to cut the metal. I screwed the sheets to the door skeleton, trying to space the screws evenly. I attach a stainless steel piano hinge to the bottom of the ramp door, but before I cut the excess hinge with one of my favorite tools of all times, the mini angle grinder. It's just so awesome to finally being able to operate a grinder with just one of my tiny hands, super versatile tool. Tested it with just a few screws and then applied the rest. Here I attach the basic stainless steel latch to each side of the door. The big door was set in place and then I started thinking on the method for opening the door. I found these two metal things on the hardware store and will be fixing them to the wall by these two holes, so there's no need to have the top part. The idea here is to open the big door and hold it in a way that it functions as a roof for when it's raining or too hot under the sun or whatever really, I just want it to flip up. So to hold it I made some basic legs out of metal tubing with some hinges that will be trapped in these metal pockets on the wall. So I drilled the through hole and this is the only shot filmed inside the studio during this project and then attached the metal pockets to the wall. Put some feed caps on the ends of the tubings and rested the legs in the pocket. Then mark the place to drill and in the end you will see this in action. So I finally painted the doors white and made some basic gutter using PVC piping. Because the top piece of the roof is flush to the rest of the front, I had to create some small channels glued with liquid rubber to the inside of the water holes for the water to escape effectively to the inside of the improvised PVC gutter. The ramp seems to be working nicely and here you can see I put a magnet on the pocket with a bolt and nut so that they are always available to use. Thanks a lot for watching, thanks a lot Bosch for all the support and I'll catch you guys soon.